What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Dolphins on Duke. Uh, this is episode right after uh, Duke moved on to the Sweet 16 uh, after beating Michigan State in, uh, in a really good game. So uh, we got my guy Cherokee Parks to come on, talk about uh, this season as a whole uh, and what he expects uh, moving forward from from the guys in the rest of the tournament. Uh, we also talk about his Duke experience and uh, what it was like his four years at Duke. Uh, so as always, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of our drops. Uh, and reach out to us over on Twitter uh, at Dre underscore Dawkins is me personally and at the field of 68. Uh, let us know what you think. Let us know who you want to hear from next. And hope you enjoyed this one. And hopefully we'll see you next week after uh, two more wins. All right. So uh, this week we got my guy, uh, the Chief Cherokee Parks. Uh, thank you for coming on. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Um, so... When we get former guys, uh, it's been a little while, but uh, I always start the podcast off with the same question. Um, what was your welcome to Duke moment? What was my welcome to Duke moment? What was like specifically like was it like on the court or just oh just when I knew? Any like moment that stands out that's like okay, this is this is what being at Duke means. Um, well, the whole, the whole journey from, uh, the recruiting to my visits to committing, um, Duke won the national championship in 91. So that's been my mm -hmm. senior year, um, get to school. Uh, I think we start out normal. I, I'd probably say we had our first game. Uh, we had, we had a, one of our first games was a national game against, uh, the, the Russian national team at the time. And I think it was like a Saturday game, but it was like on NBC or something. It was like a yeah. big televised game. And I was like, yeah. wow, this is pretty incredible. <laughs> I'm in a preseason game playing against uh, a country halfway around the world and we're on national TV. And this was a time there wasn't games. You couldn't find games all the time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So to be on a Saturday or Sunday game and playing on primetime TV was like, oh my gosh. And then you're the reigning national champion ranked number one. Yeah. And that was like, and then, Cameron's just exploding. So yeah. I think that that was probably my, oh, wow. This yeah. is pretty impressive. Man. <laughs> and that, that was the kick off the season. So yeah. we had a good year. So that was fun. Yeah, that's a solid one. Um, so I want to talk about, obviously, uh, some current events. We got a tournament going on. Um, so what have been your impressions of the team as you kind of watch from the beginning of the season? You know, I know you get back to games. Um in Cameron when you can. So being able to watch them up close this year, what have been your impressions from start of season up until now getting into the postseason? Um, it's good. It's been some up and down, I think, yeah. for, for the guys. Like there was the, the initial push at the beginning and it, it look, uh, you know, initially thinking the team was going to come together and this uh, identity was going to uh, initially form earlier on. And, uh, and then I just think uh, – you know, just apparently like games were a little more challenging than I thought, like down the stretch, uh, just in a few areas. So, um, and then uh, just as a recently, I'll just do a hyper recap, just as a recently, it looks like the team's coming together the last few games and uh, achieving what would have been beneficial early on in the year is this identity starting to come forward where we mm -hmm. can now, I, I know where AJ, what AJ's going to do and Mark's, they're running some stuff through the post and yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Jeremy's looking to shoot first and, you know, all these, these components are coming together where I see the individuality, like these guys coming together in their, comfort, in their areas are, are becoming comfortable and that's forming this collective group where we're seeing uh, they're helping the helper and they're, they're talking a little bit more and, and things of that nature. So uh, I think it's, uh, uh, you know, it's late in the season, but uh, I think it's a great time for them to, to really find out what, what they're made of. Yeah. Um, so did you push the, uh, did you push the panic button? Like a lot of people, uh, after the Carolina game, um, I know a lot of people were, were worried about us, uh, after kind of getting our butts kicked <laughs> in the coach's last game. In <laughs> um, no, no, I did not hit the panic, but I mean, I got, I got my, I got my bracket right here and you can see who's at the center of the box right there. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, <laughs> Uh, no, it was, it was being there, you know, I, I made the most of the experience and I, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not too far from there. So I walked over to the game and, and, you know, talked about the game with, you know, watch the game and had the experience and walked home afterwards and thought a lot about it. And it was, it was just, uh, uh the day I realized that, you know, or, or helped me realize that, uh, you know, we have the brotherhood, we have the players and we have all these shared experiences as, as, as players and as part of the Duke family, the Krzyzewski family. Um, 
However, on the, the, the culmination of that final game with UNC, I, I was getting a lot of uh, calls and, and, you know, just kind of uh, cool comments from people that were fans, mm -hmm. that were students, that were, you know, part of the alumni program or were just of another school that we played against a lot and just how everybody was just like, that was, he was all of our coach because it was always Duke and Coach K. There was not, there was no separation. So, uh, uh, so yeah, so that final day right there, we came in and it was just like, so what the guys must have been experiencing uh, must have been tremendous uh, combined, you know, from, from, from all of, 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 of the happenings, but then having a really relaxed UNC team in there as well that had nothing, literally nothing. Nothing to lose, yeah. You Absolutely know, like they couldn't, have, they, it couldn't have been a better setting for them to come into in the Cameron because they could just go out there and hoop and they just looked a lot more comfortable than we did, I think, on that particular day. So no, I did not hit the panic button <laughs> and then charged it up to Brooklyn and brought support up there. And then, uh, but I think, uh, I think we're, we're hitting a good stride right now. Yeah. Um, so got through the first weekend. Um, every win in the tournament is a good win. Um, what did you think about the team uh, in the first two games? I mean, been a bunch of upsets this year. It's been a crazy tournament. Um, somehow tournament always delivers uh, something nuts, but uh, we were able to make it through. So uh, what did you think about the team's performance this weekend? Um, just what we alluded to a little, little bit earlier, they're, they're coming together. Like I'll, I'll start with, uh, I like Jeremy shooting the ball. I like him yeah, coming up yeah. and looking for that shot. Not, I think a good part of the season was maybe a third option for him. Mm -hmm. And him being aggressive, it, it, it really keeps the flow of the offense going. Because then Mark and Paolo, these guys can get in good rebounding position when they know someone's in position to catch the ball and they're going to catch and shoot. I think that helps with the flow. Uh, AJ just, just continually get better and better, like his inside outside's going. Uh, Trevor, I mean, he just does a great example on the perimeter, defensively mm -hmm. digging into people. Um, I, I like seeing him trying to get to the bucket more and finishing. I think he can get into that 10 foot spot really well. And then maybe looks to pass it out, uh, more frequently than I would like. I, I think he can get up there and do a nice little floater. Uh, and then I like seeing, uh, you know, them running through some plays through Mark, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like he's in there and he's not, he's not just a, a conveyor to ball through the post and being in the right spot to get some thumb downs. Uh, there, he's getting some touches in there and he's yeah. finding out what's working for him. And I think that's, that's been really impress, impressive as well. And I think that all those little shifts right there is now, I think freed up Paolo, which we saw earlier in the year, man, they were really clamping down on him tough. Mm -hmm. And I don't think defenses are able to do that now because uh, of the other guys stepping up. So long winded, but the final, I think the X factors <laughs> are going to be these guys on the bench coming in. I yeah. think if, uh, yeah. you know, Theo or Joe, or one of these guys, it gives you, a, gives us a consistent five, six, you know, points and four or five boards, like that's an X factor right there. Use their five fouls effectively. And mm -hmm. uh, that's really going to give a boost uh, to our team. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, we've, <laughs> I think we've got a pretty good advantage most nights um, at the four or five position. Um, obviously, Paolo's a super talent. Um, inside, outside can do a lot. Um, I like that uh, in some clutch moments, he was really, attacking and getting to the basket and making guys, you know, put their bodies in front of them to stop them, uh, which, you know, they weren't able to do. Um, you know, he's, he's, you know, he's a matchup nightmare for guys. Uh, however you look at it, you know, you put a small guy on him, uh, you know, he take him in the post, put a big guy on him. He can bring him outside and get to the basket. And uh, I mean, Mark um, has really got shown some strides. I mean, I think really mm -hmm. recently, um, like you were mentioning, uh, not just being a dump off guy, but being able to actually throw it to him in the post when he's got a guy on his back and making a move, getting to the basket and scoring. So, uh, I mean, I think it'd be good for us to continue to use those two uh, to our advantage because it's uh, the two guys that are going to be hard to stop um, for other teams. I got to say, I got to add to that just because of uh, uh, not add to that, but in the middle of all this is Wendell, just because like yeah, he, yeah. he's so effect, he's so efficiently scoring. Like he's like, yo, he had twenty eight, or damn, he's yeah, got, he got thirteen of our first eighteen. Like, yeah, he, yeah. So like he's been so so fluid in that role. I, I yeah, he should have been at the, right at the heart of when we started this discussion. But yeah, his play and it's it, you know the the you know just personally the confidence I have watching him play and handling the ball and making decisions again. Talk, you were talking about you know, strides like. 
Man, like, what, what, it's been just impressive about how he's grown for the last couple of years into the confident uh, player that he is today. And that's, he's just a great, again, a glue component to our team where he can bring it inside, outside. If he's going for a nice little jumper, he's looking for the three. He can get the rebound, go coast to coast, and he's been finishing really well. So, uh, yeah, he's, he's just been tremendous. And, he's, again, he's just doing this so quietly yeah. almost, like yeah. effortlessly. Yeah. It's like he's just t- tearing it up. So, yeah, hats off to him man, for just uh, getting up in there and being like a ninja and getting it done. <laughs> no, I mean, Wendell's been great. He's been uh, he's been on a rock, honestly. Um, yep. And you see he makes like timely buckets, you know, like when – Things are a little bit iffy. Um, you know, he finds a way to, you know, hit a little 12 footer um, to kind of steady the shit. And yeah, he's, yeah. I mean, it is, it is amazing to watch because um, like you said, it's, it's so quiet. You get to the end of the game, you know, let me check the box score out. And you're like, man, yeah, you know, 16, five, six, you know, you're like, what? When did that happen? <laughs> uh, no, Wendell's been great. Uh, his leadership's been huge. And, yeah, he's just he's been just solid uh, all year. Um, what I thought was really good um, was our guys being able to rally. Uh, we were down five, I think, four, four-ish minutes left. Uh, they went on a big run to go up five. Um, and typically this year, uh, we lose those games. You know, we've lost those games uh, early in the ACC season, but uh, it was impressive to see those guys rally, um, you know, not panic. Uh, I've seen a lot of teams down the stretch just start firing up bad shots, um, you know, when they, they don't tightened need it up. To, yeah. yeah, they tightened it up down the stretch. I thought I was, I was impressed. My last yeah. couple minutes of the night was like, you know, I was good with them. Take the shots they were making, how they're rolling. And- yep. And, uh, yeah, and really started – turning the screw on the defensive end too, um, which was huge. I mean, obviously you got to score, but um, I don't know if they scored again after they got up five with a few minutes left. I mean, we really locked them down on defense and um, it, was, it was impressive to see, man. I mean, I think it was, it was, it was a really good game for us. Yeah, it's good stuff. That's one thing I appreciate just that move, when you go play past college and, and you know, you know how it is when you play in the league or, or, or the next level, like the last three minutes of the game, like eight, 10 points, nothing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nothing, yeah. yeah dude, you got to, you got to hoop all the way to the end. So yeah. I like seeing that, that poise where it's like, yo, we got this, but we got to dig in and play some defense, mm-hmm. but we still, we need, we need to still be aggressive and win this game, just not try to run out the clock and finish it. And I thought they showed that forward movement in these last couple of games. Like we're going to finish and we're still looking to get these scores if there's a little crevice in there. So uh, that's, that's going to be great. I think moving into a, uh, moving into this next round. Yeah, for sure. Um, we mentioned earlier, but can't overstate it enough uh, how big Jeremy's been in the last few weeks. Um, and honestly, it's impressive to me because he had that, uh, I don't know if lull is the word, but, you know, part of the season where he was struggling a little bit, um, starting, you know, got taken out of the starting lineup. AJ was obviously playing really, really well. So AJ got thrown in the starting lineup and it's easy. It's easy for guys to just kind of check out at that point. Um, you know, you used to be in a starter, you get relegated to bench role. I mean, he was obviously still playing a bunch of minutes, but uh, mentally it's, it can be, it's not as, it's not as hard as people think to just kind of check out the season and say, all right, whatever, man. Like, you know, you, uh, you can put me on the bench, whatever, I'm done. But um, he's done, you know, a hell of a job uh, staying locked in. And, and he's been been huge for the last few weeks and, you know, hit some uh, big shots last night, had some big drives to the basket. Um, so been very impressed with uh, what he's done. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, just to comment on that, like that through the season, that's it's tough. And we know it's like, when you're in a spot and coming off the bench, and when you're in that, that bench spot, everything becomes hyper analyzed. Yeah. Personally, it seems like around, and it's like, man, it's it's tough. It's tough. So getting in there and then you know finding that confidence and then uh, stepping up and finding that that best foot to put forward at this time is is remarkable. So, yeah, and just you could just see uh, like coach was just uh, just overall like coach was so happy. Yeah. <laughs> After the game the other day, <laughs> it was so great. Like you could yeah. just you, this joy was just radiating off the man, and it was fantastic. Yeah, it's um stark difference to. uh when he walked back out on the court after the Carolina game a few weeks ago. So it was good to see, good to see him in better spirits after uh, guys perform well. Yeah. Um, what were some things that impressed you uh, 
this past weekend? Just overall, like with with, with our squad or overall? Ah, right, we do both. Uh, we just just overall, uh, just in, in tournament fashion, March March Madness fashion is, is then you got to show up to play. Like it, yeah. it, it don't matter yeah. if you're a one sixteen seed or a yeah. two, whatever, dude. Like you got to be ready to play, and it is always your day. Doesn't matter what school you're at, and I think that's what that's what the magic and, and the term is. So I like how everybody's uh, everybody's playing. My bracket was busted earlier on. Oh, the yeah, first yeah. couple of games, I was yeah. out. Uh, and then, uh, but first you know, few hours I, in, I was just shredded. Yeah, I mean, no, my bracket wasn't busted. My my parts of my bracket got tore up. You know, my bracket's yeah. on point because I got Duke going the whole way. So my, my bracket <laughs> yeah. is just yeah, fine. we're still good there. Uh, but yeah, just a couple <laughs> little ends fell apart. But uh, but yeah, just it's been exciting and in the stories. And I always like that, like the. You know the stories of the the team that are getting it for the first time, or the story of the coaches that, that played, and you know, and they're in this the spotlight now. So I think that the the, the tournament and its you know its true spirit of competition has been great. Um, with our guys, uh, yeah, was, like you said, the uh, the UNC game, and then up in uh, the Vatek game up in uh, in Brooklyn, um, we're just like, dang, like, yeah, yeah. Come on, man! Like, yeah. the floor. like let's go. Yeah. And so, what I think I was looking, or uh, maybe looking for, in that that department is shown on their encore performance. Uh, uh, just, 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 just built these last couple of games. Like, I like the excitement. I like like being in that position where it's like that side talk of you know all these guys are first rounders now, and the season's just close, and there's distraction, distraction, distraction. And you're not it, man. You're in the Sweet 16 now, man. Like you yeah. focus. <laughs> there yeah. ain't no, there ain't no side noise a- yeah. anymore. If there was, there's not because yeah. it's like you a couple games away from going to the Final Four. And that's yeah. just magical. Yeah. So, and then you got a runway in front of you, which is you know a team that we could match up with and that they should be looking at confidently, and then a, and a potential rematch. Yeah. Uh, so you know, like that's exciting right there. Yeah. So like that should collectively be able to bring everybody together and coach being familiar with the space and then. Uh, you know, of course, with, with Shire and the staff, uh, you know, we're, we're that looking, looking forward to next season. I think the momentum is uh, fantastic. And yeah. uh, guys, uh, guys, and you know, Coach, breaking it down, we got t- two games, we got this little tournament, yep. you know, yep. we got to yep. take care of this little <laughs> tournament. Don't be looking yeah. in New Orleans. We got to handle this stuff right now, um, which, is, which is great. Uh, uh, I like that they're playing out in San Fran, too. I think that that's cool. And there's a lot of Duke fans out that way in Northern California, so I know yeah. they'll, they'll come and represent. So, uh um, yeah, I think they should, they should, uh, I think, uh, with everything in play right now, we talked about with Jeremy and Mark and some of these guys and, and Wendell, everybody's really, uh, individually really shining and collectively that's coming together. They're utilizing each other. I think the most effectively they had since earlier on in the season. So yeah, this is, this is, this is good for you guys. Get the rest this week, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> recharge, be ready yeah, to go. For sure. Uh, are some things that, um, or what are some things you think need to improve a little bit uh, in order for Duke to continue to advance in the tournament? Guys get to the rim yeah. too quick. Yeah, that's that's it right there. I think that's been a, a thorn all season is uh, guys' ability to finish at the bucket. Uh, guys' ability uh, offensively, like we're on defense, for them to finish at the rim. I think too much, considering we got Mark in there. We need some other guys stepping in there with Trevor up in there, digging in. Our help side's got to be able to get in there where we're making them pass out a little bit more. And then uh, – uh, making those adjustments on on the 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 uh, the active screen and rolls around the three yeah. uh, around the three point line like uh, you know for us having to, for us having to go into switching for a lot of those like just man we got there's there's got to be a cerebral moment where it's like Dre we got to figure this out man yeah. <laughs> like yeah. what are we doing yeah. here okay I know we're, <laughs> am I gonna push up you going under how are we gonna stop yeah, it yeah. because we could it, it just takes us once and we're gonna figure it out. And you know that that needs that need that needs to happen. I think that that is uh, happening organically now. Again, just the last couple of games, it seems like that's settled in. But those those two uh, uh, areas right there, because you don't want a confident three point shooting team like just jacking it from a couple of feet beyond where you kind of no. want them shooting it. Um, that's that's not a good thing. So especially yeah. at this time, so we we got to yeah. lock we got to lock that down. Yeah, um, I thought it was uh, there was a segment in the game against Michigan State where they were. Um, running a bunch of pick and rolls, uh, which they should because uh, we've been struggling against it. But uh, when Jeremy was on the ball, he was doing a really good job mm-hmm. of just not being screened. And um, 
that's the best way to defend it. Uh, if there's no screen, then there's yeah. no, you know, there's <laughs> yeah. nothing can happen. Uh, he did a really good job. I mean, it was one possession where he just fought over like three straight screens. Um, and then, you know, Mark doesn't really have to do anything. Um, so, I mean, if, if everyone can kind of adopt uh, his philosophy of uh, I'll just guard the pick and roll myself, that'd be nice. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And that's, and that's like, it, I think that's that, that whole shift in his confidence. Like you could see, I could, I could, you could feel it all around the court yeah. when he's out there. And that's, that's, you're, that's a great point. they a great, uh, uh, aspect of his game to highlight right now is 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 that yes his ability to read that screen now make that adjustment and let's get on and you know that's that's league mentality right there because mm-hmm. it's like whatever you need to do whatever coach puts in play and you got to check Harden you ultimately Dre had to check Harden so yeah. you got to yeah. figure out how you're going to do that and he's going to be crafty as hell and there's nothing really in practice <laughs> you can any kind of drill you can go over no. so so that 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 on court uh, adjustment like him be able to do that is is profound because that that has been a, a thorn for us these last couple of games so yeah him be able to do that on his own make that adjustment will be profoundly important here in these next two games for sure um so looking forward we got texas tech uh i believe it's thursday afternoon uh what are you expecting uh from that game um i think we need to come out and just focus on us yeah like for real like these guys are coming playing let's get out there let's get going early uh a couple of those right there were just defensive points but i think running the, the ball to mark a little bit opens up the offense um like you know palo was, was stepping in and shooting those threes they were comfortable they weren't bailout threes they were like you know okay, this is a shot i'm looking for right now yeah, yeah. And so that was comfortable so i, I think really at this point we got to focus on uh our duke game because it's going to be you know how it is like Gonzaga's right there and they're going to mm-hmm. be in the same building when you play that night. Uh, you know, either, uh, what is it? They play the game afterwards. So, yeah. Or, or, yeah so the, maybe before, right? maybe know, before. Sure. Yeah. So like that's all going on. So you, re- you really got to stay in, co- you know, we got the best staff to prepare the guys for this, but focus on that moment and getting started right and doing the things they do to win games and getting off. I think that's a huge component of it. I like the natural, the natural build on the court. I think they're, that, that momentum is going to carry. And I don't think we need to make, uh, I think we just got to keep progressing the way we are and find it, them find themselves. But uh, that preparation to stay on that, that, uh, that 40 minutes right there <laughs> yeah. and keep it on that night and just keep it on, uh, on, uh, on tech would be, would, would be the most challenging because um, Gonzaga, like you said, Gonzaga's right there. And yeah. you know what I mean? So, you, but you got to get past this game. So you can't have any letdowns. Yeah. Um, I got to watch Texas Tech uh, Big 12 Championship or Big 12 Tournament uh, play Oklahoma. So I got to see him in person. Um, they're uh, big on the wings. Uh, their guards, point guards like 6'6". Six, six. Uh, Lots of big, strong guys. Uh, so it'll be a physical game. Uh, watching the end of their Notre Dame game is very physical. Uh, it's one of those teams where uh, they they foul every possession. So, you know, it can't get called. Uh, all of them can't get called. So, uh, you know, we're going to have to bring our hard hats and, and be ready uh, for a real physical one, yeah, I think. Well, it's good, man. If you have the fouls, you know how to use them right. Yeah, I love that. I got I got a nephew right now. He's, he's playing and he's getting pretty good and uh, he's playing well. And but yeah, learning how to like, you know, oh man, like hey, that wasn't me versus yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Nah, <laughs> that, that was me. Right like, there, like you know what I mean? Like I, I never, I was never, I was never a foul prone guy. So like when I foul people, like it was usually you know there was a couple of these hands up, but you know I always could use a couple intentionally. Yeah. Um, and that's great, and that's hard to do when you got depending on how deep your bench is. You know, guys mm-hmm. have that confidence that they can. It's, you know, get aggressive with their defense and maybe pick one up and, you know, keep playing aggressively. So I think that mentality, uh, uh, like we're on that, like we're on that right now. Like yeah. we're kind of like, all right, okay, cool. Let's, all right, let's go, let's go, let's go. So uh, again, like having that be focused on this game right here uh, and coming. And uh, um, I think that's the, that's the big one right there. And getting that rest, man, before that, yeah. you know, head, heading west, make sure you get that sleeping down before you get there. Yeah, for sure. Today's episode of Darkness on Duke is sponsored by Honey, the easiest way to save money when shopping on your phone or your computer. Have you ever been in the spot? You're shopping for something online. You get to check out when it asks for a promo code. You start Googling to try and find a way to save some money. Thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past because Honey is the free tool 
that scours the internet for you and finds the one that best fits your cart. Here's how it works. You're shopping, you check out, the honey button pops up, you click apply coupons, you wait a few seconds, you watch the price you pay go down. Uh, just the other day, I needed to get a new webcam, uh, used honey, saved myself about 10 bucks. Um, so if you don't already have honey, you could be straight up missing out. By getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting the show. I never recommend something I don't use. Get honey for free uh, at joinhoney.com slash March Madness. That's joinhoney.com slash March Madness. Um, so want to get take it back to uh, to your experiences at Duke. Um, first of all, how did uh, how did Duke get you from California all the way over to Durham, North Carolina. <laughs> yeah, it was uh man, I think coach it seemed like uh this was the way they were they recruited at the time, but we would come in and he would just you'd have a meeting with with with, with coach and we, you generally knew the staff like uh, Tommy Amaker and, and Bray were were the recruits and Bray was out in California a lot, so you got to know the assistant as well and then uh you go in and meet coach and coach would just he turned me over to the to the guys. She said, here you go. We, we mm -hmm. met at the Oak Room and had uh, lunch, like later on, met in his office, had lunch. But for the most part, I was hanging out with the guys and rolling around. And, uh, you know, at the time was, you know, Bobby was there, and Bobby Hurley and Grant Hill and Thomas Hill and Kenny Blakeney was there. And, uh, of course, Leitner and Davis. And, and so uh, just being with those guys, Duke's real close community, small. Uh, that was nice. Uh, Quinn Schneider and Jay Billis were the, were the grad assistants. So I hung out with, uh, with Quinn quite a bit on the trip. And so you can see like the, just the level that all those guys are at now, uh, that what attracted, <laughs> attracted me to the, to the team then. Yeah. Uh, you know, everybody's gone on, you know, Tony Lang's coaching the league, Grant owns teams, like, you know, uh, uh, and even the guys after me with, you know, Chris and Wojo and Trajan, like, Everybody went on to tremendous success. So I, I, I felt that community when I was there on that trip. And uh, um, yeah, I was just, I was just pulled in on it right there. So I, I, I made up my mind on the plane trip back and then called coach when I landed Sydney and nice. sent those papers. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Uh, <laughs> so you came into, as a freshman, you came into the uh, defending national champions. Um, what was that like for you? What were, like your expectations coming in, knowing that they were coming off of uh, winning their first title and bringing most of the guys back. Yeah, none. It's it's, uh, <laughs> it's deer in the headlights for real. It's yeah, like, yeah. Tell me where to go and what to do mm -hmm. when you come in, and like you look at that, like getting the hyper contrast of coming to national championship team. Uh, almost everybody's back yeah. on the team. And then like with the with the Fab Five that freshman year, like I came yeah. into super structured everything's said, all the starters are coming back, everybody's ready to go. And then you look at like where the fat five's coming in, it's like, man, they have this whole, hey, we got to figure ourselves out and be expressive. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, like I said, so I'm using that as a kind of say, I came into a very, you know, program it was very ready, it was very set up, success and be going to final fours for six or seven years, like straight in. Like, yeah. And so like, it really was just show up and like, you know, just be there and be present. And the leadership we had on there with the, you know, the seniors being captains and having that be Leitner and Brian Davis and, Again, having the point guard leadership in Hurley, and then you know Grant Hill was just uh, you know the, the you know overall on court off court um, that uh, yeah you just you just stepped right into it. That's why I stated earlier that game with the uh, with the with the Soviet Union and that first it was nationally televised and it was an exhibition game. I was like, wow, man. And then when we started the ACC, it was like next level. Yeah. Like, I was like, God, this is, how does it get any different? And when the, the conference started, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, there's another level here. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> But uh, uh, yeah, that, that going through and that, uh, um, you know, just uh, that, that being there was like, there was, it was, everything was set up and we didn't have any, that, you know, obviously that time and we were still reading the paper to get info. Yeah. I don't think ESPN <laughs> two was out yet. You know what I mean? so we, uh, we had, we bond all the time because we were together. Like we had our team meals. There was, you, you had to talk yeah. about it. Yeah, there was no picking up phones or doing anything. So the camaraderie was tight, quick. Yeah. And, you know, since all the guys already knew each other and most guys were returning and just uh, myself and Eric Meek were coming in. Yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was pretty easy to, to just slide by in there to, uh, to, you know, just show me your friends. I'll show your future. And so, <laughs> <laughs> when they came out to na national championship, I'll be friends with y'all. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's number two. <laughs> yeah. So what was, uh, what was that like uh, being a freshman, being on the team? And then um, obviously you guys ended up winning it again that year. Um, what was that experience like for you? Uh, it's whirlwind. We were like uh, 34 and two 
Yeah, and yeah. And we like we pretty much ran it ran the game like when you know if we were supposed to win by ten, we would win by ten or twelve or thirteen. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and you know, a couple games were close, but it was it was the, the games were really effective. You know, so like listen to how coach would would uh, things he would say after the games and you know to encourage us and and and, and have us move forward. Um, but uh, the le- le- uh, the leadership was great. Uh, mm-hmm. Christian was really good, man. He was tough on everybody and he has that image, but it was really helpful, I think, for our squad um, to kind of have him be, a, have him be that, that, that kind of focal point, uh, you know, in a negative way a lot. And mm-hmm. uh, he took a lot of, you know, a lot of that for the team. So I think that was helpful. And then um, again, going to the, 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 the NC2A experience, like, you know, they've been going to final four, like championship games, like at that time, like every year, mm-hmm. and there was a gap or two in there since like 85 or 86 or something. So this is when I'm coming in. To, so this is 91, 92. And uh, it's just like, you just think that's how it is. Like that's, yeah, just, you don't, yeah. you don't understand at the time how hard it is to get to the national championship. <laughs> Yeah. When you're coming in and your squad just does that all the time. And then you get back and then, we, you know, second year we lost. And then the third year we got back again when I was a junior. And it's like, yeah. damn, you see it now and you're like, dang. Yeah, that's tough. Really tough, that's tough. And so like, uh, yeah, just kind of this uh, coach had just uh, built this culture where you just, you expected success and you, you were, you expected to, to of your mo of yourself to, to be the best you can be and play the hardest. And uh, that's the world that's slapping the floor and the, uh, the bruises and all that, you know, right, we, that got that got laid on laid out there. But uh, yeah, just it was we were able to just step right in, man. It was just like, man, you just you just get out here and do, try your hardest, and things things will work out really good. And, and that was the case. Yeah. Well, what do you think was the key to um, having that level of consistency, um, especially like, you know, we we both played in tournaments, we've watched tournaments for years, like that's damn near impossible, you know, to, to, to be that consistent over and over and over again and then making deep runs. Um, what was the key to, to having that success? Uh, I think that, uh, camaraderie I'll start with first. Like, yeah. you know, I think when you, when you probably go back and, and you're watching your old footage, you know, similar to when I'm watching footage, man, like when we're huddling up at the free throw line, like we're, we're like, our heads are almost touching. Yeah. Like we're like this, like mm-hmm. we're all hugged up and completely surrounded and we're talking and we did that all the time. And you always saw everybody huddled up, really tied at the free throw line. Hey, this is what we're going to do. And that togetherness, I think, was, uh, was what, what really brought us together. Because then you really can depend on your guys. You can get vocal with your guys and, and uh, uh, you know, you keep it on the court and it's, and then, you know, when you have a team meal afterwards and everybody's sitting there and there's, again, there's no phone. So you, yeah. you, you just start jawing about practice and what just happened and hashing stuff out. Like it's really effective with that. That togetherness uh, was what I remember the most. It's like really saying, man, it's all of us out here having to do what we need to do to, to get this done. Um, there was no, you know, guys, one year is one and done. Yeah. There was no yeah. positionless guys. Like Grant was really mobile, but still he was like a really strong three. You know, he could play mm-hmm. point, but he was like really your, your small forward. Um, and so all of those components together make it uh, learning the game, uh, I think, simpler. And then uh, bringing the guys together, um, again, just uh, does more time for you. But uh, that, 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 that's what I think set our experiences, uh, you know, uh, maybe apart from other teams at that time. Yeah. How much uh, your freshman year, uh, like you mentioned, uh, Leitner was, uh, you know, your senior captain. How much were you able to uh, kind of pick his brain and learn from him uh, your freshman year? All the time. He would never stop talking. Yeah. Like, it was like as mellow as he looked, like he would be talking crap the whole time, like all yeah. practice. Like, <laughs> he would like, he would want to, he had no vert. I mean, I don't know how many dunks he had his senior year. And I don't know how many blocks he had either. But he'd want to stay after practice and do the you know the dunk game where he just try to dunk on each other and block yeah. it like that was it like he would be the one to want to set that up. But he'd be like, he's the last one to want to set this up, and he would go at it because he would like that was the thing. But that was his competitiveness. Um, uh, he was like that off the court with everything. You know, if you were like uh, you, you we were bowling or just going or playing a little game or this or that or you know what it was like, what what kind of gear you were wearing that day. Like <laughs> he was just competitive, but on the court he was uh, he he always just he led with his actions. So he was always doing the right thing, and his game was as such that it was a uh, uh, visually you can watch him and learn from it. But he he would get on you on the court, man. He would yeah. just you know if he was busting you, he'd let you know, or he'd come at you harder. And those moments right there, I think emotionally get you kind of built up and, and build that strength in there. Because uh, then when you again looking back on it, if he, 
he just like stone face, just like you never see him really losing it. Or yeah. Like, yeah. Just, you know, did that like at all. And but then you look at the amount of games that he's been in where he was a clutch player in those moments, you're like, okay, that makes that makes sense. Yeah. So that that <laughs> that carried that was in practice. That's how he was all practice. Yeah. Same way. Um he made a big jump uh in production uh from junior to senior year. What was uh what were some of the keys for you um, to jump up to, I think it was what, 19, 19 and 10 or something like that your senior year? Yeah, yeah. Uh, just, uh, I think getting in there, understand my role a bit more. I was mm-hmm. primarily, first few years, I was around the blocks most of the time. And, and yeah. you know, I, I would, I'd take the 17 foot jumper, you know, when I was open, but it was nothing that I was out there looking for. And then senior year, the game opened up a little bit. We were able to bring Eric inside, uh, Meek, and I think, Defensively, that that gave teams a little bit of matchup. Who who they were going to put on us? Uh, again, this is coming out of more of a traditional four five setup, where we would typically play a strong center with a with a strong power forward. So that just uh, we were able to give a little bit of a mismatch in there, um, and so uh, that just it was able to just spread it out and just give some more looks, uh, you know, overall in the offense. My uh, junior year, I think our, our our scoring was real balanced. I think uh, Grant mm-hmm. Levison scoring around sixteen, and then we were all kind of like. 10, 12, 11, you know, like it was really like in the middle. So we were all kind of spreading around everybody, would, but everybody uh, had a chance to have a game that year, which was really cool. Yeah. yeah. You know, so we had a couple of guys, you know, I mean, like everybody had their, their career game at some uh-huh. point. So I had 15, you know, or something like that. So that, that made it really fun again. And I think that led, uh, what I talked about earlier was the, the, the camaraderie yeah. for those moments like that. But senior year, uh, we've been around, Collins was on there and, and Capel spreading the, spreading the floor out and, you know, Wojo was uh, was able to play some point, and I was able to spread out the uh, uh, cape a little bit too. So uh, I think just to get uh, the court was just uh, breathing a little bit differently. Yeah. So I was able to get out and get a few more shots, start taking some threes, some trailers, some things like that. Yeah. So I think that uh, that overall shift uh, kind of just uh, you know was able to add a couple more points to the, to the books. Um. So this is kind of random, but it was your senior year, I think. I think possibly the worst Duke jersey of all time the blue ones with the with the white straps here yeah did you guys did you guys like those at the, no. at the time when you got them no because they were they were untraditional the other ones looked like when we my first year two years we were adidas so yeah we had, yeah yeah so yeah. we had, so we had yeah. adidas and then champion did our uniforms the first two years and then, so when we flipped to nike um the, they wanted to keep that traditional hit the first one and then my senior year they decided to add that little piece on there yeah and i yeah. think and then, and then you add it, it since that was 95 that being as baggy as you could possibly yeah, be on the yeah. court kind of <laughs> added to it like you know everybody was going larger than, than normal so yeah uh, yeah they weren't i didn't think they were that they weren't that we weren't we weren't super fans at that time either yeah okay i was just wondering because yeah. every time i see you know i look look guys up before I talked to him and I saw that jersey, I was like, man, that's not a, that's not a, it's not a flattering jersey. Nah, that was uh, they kind of like hung off the, yeah. off the show. <laughs> <laughs> but you remember the league too, and that was a job too, because it, it had been straight traditional before then, like, yeah, yeah. Know, like lay up and, or switch it up. But we remember getting into the league around that time. Look at, look at like the 96, 97, 98 class and like Ray Allen and all those guys. Iverson got the same kind of jersey. Yeah, that, yeah. So it started to go from the thin out to like the wider kind, which the women's basketball usually only had the wider yeah, cut yeah, up there. Yeah. And then that blue stripe accentuated that made it a little bit Yeah, wider, yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we were up on that too, man, for sure. <laughs> um, so <clears throat> your senior year was uh, the year coach was out um, with his back surgery and his complications. Um, what was that like from, from a player's perspective? Obviously a tough season. Um, a lot of losses. I think you guys started 0 and 6 in conference, but from a player's perspective, especially as a senior, having had so much success, you've been to a couple of national championship games already. Um, having to go through that struggle, especially without coach, what was that like for you? Uh, it was tough. It was tough. It was uh it was it was just just the culmination thing, just uh it the, the abruptness of it because we started off the season and so we were together and it was a couple games in that the uh, coach coach had to ruin himself in the team and um having i guess like i guess that i could even jump up to the experience now like i was saying earlier about everybody the feeling of everybody like coach is gone and 
And, uh, you know, coach's last game at Cameron, it was, it was like that at the time. It was like, your coach is not around. He's not available. Yeah. So it's like, that was never, you know, and you, and you know how the, how enriched the family is in the program too. So he's just not around. He's not available. So, um, instantly we had that similar to Carolina where like everybody was just gunning for us. Yeah. So it was like, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, you want to say the officiating was different. So all those conversations started to come out <laughs> immediately. Right. And so you had sucked up in that and, it was just tough because we just, we couldn't, uh, you know, uh, for us on the floor, we, we couldn't get the W, man. We were just mm -hmm. right there and we couldn't finish off games like down the stretch last couple minutes. So, we, you know, it wasn't like anything like being ill prepared or, you know, working on any games in practice situation. Um, it just, we just couldn't get past that, that, that just those last couple minutes of the game. And, and then, uh, you know, staff wise, uh, coach got that was coaching yeah. us and Co coach G was our big man coach. He was never uh, like the X's and those guys. He would always scout the big guys and, and work with us in practice. So having him be the head coach was new. Um, you know, like I said, we had Bray and Amaker on the staff as well. Um, so it, it was just, it was just tough. Like, uh, you know, it was, it was one of those, like, again, like the highlighting the camaraderie earlier. It's like, man, you, I mean, you get the team. I guess say this is like, and this I send is like, like that. The, like just how challenging uh, things can be when there's just like a, a little tiny changes. I mean, we had we had Capel on on the on the, yeah. on, the on the roster. We had Capel, Wojo, Collins, yeah. Kenny Blakeney, Trajan Langdon, yeah, Ricky Price. Like all yeah. these guys coach and like are like you know leaders in their organizations and things like that. And you know when you're trying to find that identity on the floor. Like we, we had it everywhere. And look at what Bray and Amaker went on, mm -hmm. you know, like great head coaches and, you know, but at that time it was like, you know, and I, I had time to, to, to speak with coach K about it. And it's like, you know, he's the, he's the, the, the wheel metaphor about being the hub yeah. and then when the, and then the spokes are connected and that's the strength of the rim. And, but, you know, you take that hub out of there and, you know, you just, you, that, that wheel loses his integrity, um, uh, you, know, uh, you know, compositionally wise. And it was just similar to that. Like it was just, no one was prepared for that yeah like at all like no one no there's no way to prepare for that carolina game the last yeah. one home yeah. <laughs> you got to play it man yeah. it's baptism by fire yeah. So, yeah so that's that's what it was like and it was just uh you know it was just a really really tough year man we, just, we really had to fight hard for every game or every point just to be in it and it was you know it was just uh it was tough because we, we we had all the talent we had, you know the staff was doing great you know guys that and, and amaker brave doing great everybody on the team was playing well and, and you can tell by the success that they've had that they're all leaders and, mm -hmm. and coaches so yeah just you know it's just tough like, yeah. i had that tough game but that tough game is like every game yeah yeah well i mean and the biggest the biggest thing um had to be like the abruptness of it right you know it's one thing if it's you know, hey, coach is having a surgery. We're, you know, and we're planning it over the summer. He, you know, Coach Gaudet's going to be the coach. You guys get used to him and blah, blah, blah. He knows it's coming. Um, but, you know, just the abruptness of it and then just pulling him, you know, pulling coach out uh, is, I mean, that that's crazy. I can't even, I can't even imagine uh, yeah. what that and was like is, for you guys. And this is no, no text. And, and you remember, so we would, just, yeah, yeah. You know, we were all using landlines. So you had mm -hmm. to call people. So like, if you wanted to talk to him, you know, you would call his, his home mm -hmm. and there was no other way to reach people. Or if you wanted to get some kind of communication, you'd get these, get these, get these little Duke fold over, it said Duke basketball and write a little note in there and you get it in the mail. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, uh, I mean, so it wasn't just like, you could just reach out and yeah. like, text guys all the time and stay in touch like that. So it was just like, you know, just a, a unique time and just uh, the way things came together and just it's an amazing story again moving forward to how successful everybody did not on that team is like everybody's moved on and done really great and, and in coaching roles um so yeah it was, it was just a, a wild time and a lot to learn yeah all right so um one more thing for you uh this is how we like to end the podcast uh, i need your all-time uh duke starting five and a sixth man Oh man, starting five and a six man. Yeah. Oh, dude, you got to do this right now. Like, you, yeah, man. You know we how many players gotta I got to go through and try to rock this <laughs> and you have to put me in a GM role? Yeah, so man. I'm a, I'm a, you, know, you know, I want to say all the guys I played with, man. You know, I got to say Bobby and Grant. And yeah, like, hey, like, hey. I can legitimately roll with those guys. <laughs> legitimately. So, oh man, this is what they've gone on to do. Like, whew. Oh man. Okay, so I'm gonna go with more like the the guys who, you know, 
been there a little bit. Like, got to go with, with Leitner. Yep. Uh, he was just just clutch always. Um, I got I got to Grant in there. Mm-hmm. Man, see, I saw Johnny play a lot. So, like, you know, I could jump up into, like, Kyrie, J. Will, get some newer guys. I mean, but then you got, like, the Ingrams. Man, you can't – like, you put guys on the spot for this? Like, you, you could have yeah. told about this last week. Yeah, no, no, I got, I, I, I can't – I can't <laughs> – I got to put so you on the spot. This, we do this with the guys. All the, all the new guys have, like, guys for, like, the last five or six yep, years. You yeah, get to yeah. the older heads, and we're like, yeah, yeah oh, no, Johnny, Dr. Man, you know, but Danny Ferry was nice. It's like – Yeah, yeah. So, it's like, shoot, um – Mm-mm-mm. I got I got to do. I played with Elton too afterwards, man. Elton was really good, man. But then Shane Battier, like four years in there, dude, man. Yeah, I've got a Grant Christian. Mm. JJ too, like. <laughs> Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> man, yeah, dude, like, oh, man, like I had JJ in there. He okay. just, like, he always, always just winning. Kyrie, I went to there, but he only played a couple games. I could put Kyrie out there. And then, and Brandon came up strong, too. So where are we at right now, man? This is yeah, like, Leitner, Grant, Grant, JJ. Jeez, man. I like Jay Will too, man. Like I like Jay Will yeah. in there. Yeah. yeah. Um. Mm, mm, mm. No, no, I, I, I can't. I, I. Then you're making me pick on this, man. Like, uh, yeah. I, got... I can't. I can't put one. In, I can't put one group in front of the other, man. It's just like. <laughs> I do this with Ross and my NBA teams too, man. We do this and we try to go through and you try to match up the NJs and Magic with like guys playing now. I'm like, dude, it's not like this. So, but like, and then the guys that come in for just like a year, I mean, they're super hot, like Zion. I mean, you could put all that in there, mm-hmm. but it's like, you know, but it's like, man, but like, you know, Zion there for four years would have just been legendary. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, mm-hmm. so yeah, I got to put Zion on there. So, is that, yeah. so we got J Will. JJ, Grant, Zion, Leitner. Now we need a guy off the bench. We need a sub off the bench, man. Oh, sub off the bench. Dang, man. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe we got to go with... uh... Oh, man. So let's bring a shot blocker, man. Let's bring a Sheldon. Let's bring a Sheldon up the back. All right, all right. So yeah. we're going J. Yeah. Will, uh, JJ, Grant, Zion, Leitner, Sheldon. All right. And that's, that's his year, too. I could throw EB in there, too. Man. Yeah, yeah. There, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you know, and Corey, man, I, I love Corey. There's a lot of people. Later, yeah. But like, Lou you all day, you could quick, throw Lou in there. Day, like, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Man, that's, that's a tough one, man. It's tough, There's some man. hoopers, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's a tie too, but uh, man, appreciate the heads up on that. <laughs> there you go. All right, man. That's all I got for. I won't put you on the spot anymore. Uh, I appreciate your time, man, and uh, have a good one. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. And uh, man, let's let's go Devils, man. We got we got two more to knock out before there's two more. So let's let's do this. Absolutely, absolutely. All right. All right. Cool. I appreciate you, man. Thanks for having me on. All right. Take it easy. All right, brother.